Hey, welcome back to episode 15 of Spell Store Miniatures. My name is Jeremiah, and I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I'm Dan, and I think I make a few, but not as many as you. Yeah. My name is Chad, and I'm perfect. Ouch. Oh, this is, we're getting off to a really good start. Um, hey, uh, Spell Store Miniatures is a podcast dedicated to tabletop war, uh, war games, including War Machine and Hordes. Uh, our goal here is just to inspire you to play more games. Uh, this episode of Spell Store Miniatures is brought to you by Hidden Forest Gaming. Hidden Forest Gaming provides game mats and terrain sets for all your gaming needs. Enter discount code SPELLSTORM10 to receive 10% off your next purchase. Uh, hey guys, play any games lately? Well, yes I have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as we've uh, discussed previously. But um, a little bit of Battletech is what I got in this uh, last couple weeks. That's right, that's right, because uh, Catalyst reissued a starter box or whatever, and and so uh, I picked up some Battletech miniatures, and we put them on the table. Yep. Yeah. How about you, Chad? Uh, I've done demos, a uh, couple of different demos. I did one uh, demo of Monster Apocalypse for Oz last week, uh, and then... Nice, he loved that, by the way. Uh, yesterday I was doing a demo of Kill Team for a couple of my buddies who I haven't played before, uh, one of which is pinning up uh, all of his stuff at... Um, is Imperial Fist, so yellow armor, hard lines, and it, it all looks fantastic. Uh, if and you then, can do it right, it does. Right? It, yeah, hard. there was a cool tutorial yeah. that he found that made it look uh, pretty easy. Uh, and then you were just giving me a Shadespire demo for the second time. <laughs> hey <-o. laughs> Yeah, we've been, uh, we've been playing that a little bit around the house. Yeah. And so uh, last night, Oz and I played again. I've ran my corn guys against his fire slayers. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of guys with no shirts and axes charging each other. Yeah. And um, Ozzy um, just destroyed me. He outmaneuvered me, and he outployed me, and he outobjected me, if that's a word. <laughs> so <laughs> it, mean, it was a it was a subtle victory. He only won nine to four, Oof. but it felt like a clobbering. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, Ozzy's kind of good at at uh, reveling in his own victories. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that is true. He, he, he knows how to gloat a little bit. Yeah. I remember playing him, uh, yeah, like the War Machine, and yeah, he was he was having a good time and was uh, <laughs> trash talking the entire time. Yeah. Oh, you wait until Saturday when we talk about the King of Queens Invitational. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I I got a, a weird game of X Wing in um, with uh, with uh, one of uh, Claire's friends, and he was very excited to to learn how it goes and. Uh, and so I haven't played X-Wing in a while, and, and it was kind of nice to get it out. It was kind of just a, a good palate cleanser. But, yeah, so that's really all I've done for non-War Machine games. Um, how about War Machine games? How, how about you guys? Negative. Mm. Uh, just the games from the King of Coins uh, over the weekend. Yeah, that's right, which is our main topic for today. We wanted to talk about the King of Coins event. We wrapped it up. We had the Invitational this past Saturday. Woohoo! Yeah, woohoo! And uh, some of our coin holders weren't able to make the Invitational, and so we got in, um, we invited some wildcard participants, and so um, I wasn't going to, I wasn't, my plan wasn't to play, uh, but we didn't have enough participants to step in that wildcard space, and so I became a wildcard participant. And you gave yourself all the best matchups. <laughs> uh, did I? No. It was, it was all, after round one, it was all determined based on my excellent performance. Uh -huh. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so, uh, but Chad, you, you played, you you were a coin holder. Yes, I and had And so you Kirk's earned coin. your right to be there. I did. <laughs> yeah. uh, I had the Crick's coin. Uh, that I had taken from Jacob. Uh, he had played Sorcerer 3, uh, Mana War into me, and I played Grail, and I ended up out scenarioing him uh, to take that coin from him, which felt good. Like, nice. Out scenarioing Mana War theme force always feels good. It's hard, it's hard, yeah, it's hard to you know, push those guys around. How did, uh, how did your, um, like, how did your games go overall? Uh, any big takeaways from, from the Invitational? Uh, the big takeaway is I need to play more because I lost to Greg in round one due to uh, poor clock management uh, and not knowing a list. I played two lists that I had built two days previous to the event okay. because I just got the Well of Orboros on Wednesday uh, and I wanted to make a couple of cool lists with it. One of them was a Balder 2, Bones of Orboros list that had one in there. 
uh, that I really like the feel of the list. I just want, I need some more practice with it. Yeah. Uh, the other one was a Morvana 2 list in the Wolf Sworn theme, also with the Well of Orboros. That one is kind of more cute. Uh, there's a couple of really cute interactions that I wanted to play around with that I thought would be fun. Uh, I did not end up playing that game, uh, but I ended up um, losing to Greg. Uh, I conceded to Eli because I just didn't feel like either of my lists had a game into his two very finely tuned and well-practiced lists. Uh, so mm -hmm. we decided to get lunch instead. Uh, and then I played a game against you, Jeremiah, in the third round, and we can talk about that later. <laughs> That game was super fluky. Like, I seriously thought you had a, a trick up your sleeve or something. So, yeah, we didn't. Well, the well, trick was I didn't think the Hydra was going to walk around the building. <laughs> I thought my positioning was okay. Yeah, yeah, the, that silly Hydra. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we can talk about those games. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll catch everyone up on my round one was against Oz. So, I, I'm only practicing more about two right now. So, that's the only list I have. And, and, and I talked about my Dan, my game with you, Dan, in our last episode, where it was my kind of first time putting on the table and how we went through three different end game scenarios, depending on whatnot. So, um, I did not learn from that experience with you. <laughs> and so I put Morble 2 right up there and, and I tried to flesh hooks, um, Oz's guy and, um, it was not, it was the mauler. It was just a hit extreme mauler right there. And just standing right there. So pretty. And anyway, and so, so, to and, so spells, yeah. okay. and so, so, um, and so, uh, and he kept telling me, um, I could get you if I feed, I could get you <laughs> if I feed. And so yeah. he, he literally tempted me three times and I was like, oh, he's not going to feed. He's totally baiting me. <laughs> and so I go right up to his no, start range <laughs> and no, he totally feeded and he totally and wild aggression feed go get he, he totally in in two activations just put me in the ground and and what i didn't learn was that with that flesh hooks doesn't go off i i needed to i should have yes. feeded and i did not feed and mm -hmm. so i was like you know it's top of one it's too early to feed you know or whatever it no is. it's not um, stay alive yeah. and so um so i did not learn so i, I lost and that game ended so quickly it was mm -hmm. so sad and so but it means that i got to walk around and be a judge and which is which is, i'm going to talk about later which was a very good experience for me uh, round two was the best game ever i played kyle again and and in that game um i uh was not winning well he was running his uh, black industries gatsby three list i think yeah and so i had the he had a bunch of arc nodes and he was just it was just this umbrella covering my guys right and so i was like hmm, well what can i do here well i can Make one guy incorporeal, I can blind Gatsby, and I can mortality him, and then I can go in and try to kill him. And so, and that's basically what I did. And I was like, I explained ahead of time what I was going to do, this is what I'm going to do. And, and the biggest takeaway from that lesson, from that, from that game, was two things. One, read your cards. Read all of your cards. Yes. Because Gatsby's feet says anytime that I spend a fury, uh -huh. he gets mm. to heal D3, right? Yep. Well, if I mortality Gatsby, he can't have runes removed from him. Oh, uh, no, he can't. No, he can't. And so that means when when my when my um, when my gladiator, who is now incorporeal, tramples through the forest the other side and buys a tax to put him in the dirt, mm -hmm. he can actually put him in the dirt. Yes. And and so. Um, and so that whole exchange didn't work out the way that I thought, and so and so Gatsby ended up living, so I conceded. And then afterwards, Eli was standing there, and he, and he was like, you know what you could have done differently? And I was like, please, what could I have done differently? And he said, Mala Karn had a line of sight to Gatsby, and if he would have made Mala Karn um, incorporeal, he could have attacked, he could have charged for free because of, because of the standing next to a, a, a beast handler, yeah. yeah, and so would not have triggered Gatsby's feet again, and then and then I mean a charging POW sixteen because he would have been enraged or whatever. Yeah, POW um, sixteen weapon master, weapon master. Get you just, there a lot faster. You just and and I was like, oh, that would have been a better <coughs> vector. Yeah, same idea. Yeah, and so the biggest takeaway was this: was Morgul two actually has tools. I can actually do yes, fun things with him. <laughs> and so I'm thrilled. I'm very excited. So he's like my new favorite thing in the world now. So, and then round three, you and I played. Yes. And, yes, we did. And so... Uh, uh, you won the die roll. You went first. I picked yep. this side of the table that I thought was going to be good. Um, I, you ran everything forward, and I 
I moved forward and got myself into a very aggressive position um, where Balder was like between a house, his objective, and some shifting stones and a rock wall that I placed. Uh, what I didn't do was push the shifting stones far enough forward uh, to block if you would have gotten something into base to base with them, killed one of them, and been able to reach to him. And I also didn't place the rock wall, the rock wall as well as I should have. Yeah. So what ended up happening was I w just wasn't thinking about your desert hydra walking around the building. Uh, the set getting rushed, walking around the edge of the building enough to be able to get those eight inch sprays onto Balder. Yeah. And then you also proceeded to hit three unboosted sevens in a row at yeah. dice off three against Balder, as well as um, rolling like eights and nines on damage at dice off three. Or you were rolling, I think it was like sevens and eights, basically. Like it was enough that you were, you put significant damage into yeah. him. I cleared all the other guys that were there. And you killed... Yeah. No, you killed one Shifting Stone, which was that all was. that you needed for Mullet Karn to be able to yeah. just charge and get... Uh, to be able to see and then charge Balder. Which I was thought the there was a solo that I killed, too. Huh. Oh, yeah. there. Sorry, you're right. There was yeah. uh, Quack and Gub, and then there was also a Black Cloud Wayfarer, but yeah. they weren't relevant to the bigger threat that was Mullet Karn yeah. on the other side of the table. No, I think... I think I think what you said right there is is that I was successfully rolling high numbers naturally. Yeah, it was un, it was so fluky. It was a lot of it was fluky. Yeah, actually, it was it was even a lot of like unboosted eights. Yeah. Like it was a lot of hard eights, sevens, eights, and then you just killed everything that was standing there. Killed a uh, shifting stone. Um. Through a couple of sprays at dice off four. And yeah. then, because I, I anticipated that you were going to be trying to send Mullicarn or something else in, and I was trying to position models in a way that you, you didn't have the range support dedicated to kill a sentry, or to kill a shifting stone from range on that side of the table. Right. So I wanted you to get into melee and either waste a me to either waste a melee attack charging with Mullicarn, in which case now you need sixes to hit Balder through three two or three transfers. Right. And I was like, I'm okay with that because I can soak a hit or two right. with how much health that I have and then I kill Mullet Karn and then probably kill your Desert Hydra on the next turn if you bring it forward and then I've, I've killed half your army and then yeah. I feet and everything is plus three armor and can't go anywhere. Was the, was ultimately the plan I was trying to execute and position for and it just didn't happen that way. Yeah. And I foolishly went for it and got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah was like, you're so calm, Chad. What do, what's yeah. wrong? What do you, I know. I don't understand why you're so calm. <laughs> I was like standing there with my fingers steepled. Like, yeah, sure. Go for yeah. it. Like, I seriously asked him, like, if we were playing poker, I would have just, I would have bet the house, which was exactly yeah. what I did. Yeah. And, you know, and luckily I, I got the cards, I guess. But, but I, I checked. I was like, counter blast, counter charge. Like I planted all these yeah. guys. Like if I go <laughs> here, what happens to me? <laughs> and Chad's like, nothing. I'm like. Hmm. Going there. <laughs> really? Okay, then I guess I'll go for it. Like, yeah. <laughs> big walking gargantuan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So before we uh, before we actually like dissect the King of Coins event, um, I want to give a huge uh, shout out uh, to Abby and JC uh, because they, we we had this joke online about um, you know Taco Tuesdays and said we're Takoy Tuesdays. Um, oh. So the Company of Iron, playing Company of Iron on a Tuesday while eating tacos. <laughs> and so we kind of put it all together, and and I want to and I want to say it was awesome. Ozzy and I went over there, and and J C made like these bomb tacos. They were shrimp tacos, and you know, and all the and all the fixings, like all the fixings, and and we just played Company of Iron. You know, um, Ozzy and and Abby played a game, and then J C and I played a game, and and we just kind of shot the breeze a little bit, and uh, and it was amazing, like. And, and, and Abby killed tacos, dude. He, like, he, he was like, uh, you, you know, uh, Oz was like, Oz was like, oh man, I wanted more tacos, but, but I didn't know if I could. And then I saw Abby's plate. So then I went back and got another one. Like, <laughs> yeah. Abby, um, Abby used to be a bigger dude. And oh, so I'm well, sure he probably still carries some of that appetite. You know, all, all I'm saying, him away. but those, those tacos were just so good. So, um. So Takoi Tuesday it has to be a thing now. <laughs> so we have uh, War Machine waffle War Machine waffles and War Machine 
uh, for our painting days on Saturdays, and now we have Takoi Tuesdays. Uh, Is it for... WWW Waffles War Machine Weekend? Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, we could do this. Okay. Uh, yeah, so talking to Curtis, we should actually plan another. Yes. And and I think Asher, I think Asher said that he makes like like really awesome scones, and so okay. so we can have a whole brunch, Gene, just Gene's... a whole brunch and. We gotta fit. We gotta fit pretzels in there somewhere because apparently James makes some some really good pretzels. And to this day, through I think two or three different batches of baking, I have not had one because oh, he's always man. like, "Hey, you want one?" I'm like, uh, "Not right now." Like, I I, def- I want one, but like not right this second. And then by the time I come back around, like, "Hey, I'm ready for a pretzel," he's like, "You oh." You should have got them while you had it. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're gone. <laughs> Put it in your pocket next time. Yeah. Hang on to yeah. it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So next time I have that opportunity, and James yeah. come to me first, I will take a pretzel, whether I'm going to eat it right that second or not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and then we also want to do another shout out um, for uh, uh, for um, uh, a guy named Niels. So yeah. I met I met Niels at Guardian Saturday morning, just standing in the parking lot. Just we instantly became friends. He, you know, he's a dad. He's a gamer, and and he understands all of it, right? just like me, right? Dad, gamer, and everything, and uh, and he's from Germany, and and I, he said that he has a, a protectorate army, uh, but there aren't a lot of War Machine players in his area, and so I, was, I just want to encourage Niels to you know get out there and, and invite someone over to his to his place and play on the dining room table, you know, and and build build your own meta there. Um, but uh, so that's cool. So now we have you know listeners. We have listeners all over the world, um, but now we have uh, someone we know in Germany. So, yes. hi, Niels. Thank you. Um, and then we, um, I also met a couple from Maryland. They were at Guardian uh, a couple of days ago, and they wanted to, um, they wanted to, they're thinking about moving here for work, and so they came out here kind of like a, to look at the area. Scouting around. Yeah, scouting, and, and the, their number one criteria was they, they needed to, to know that we had a good game store. Yes. And so, and was, we've got several. <laughs> we've got several, and so I went through we're, the whole game. We're, honestly, we're spoiled. Like, we are. talking to some people from oh, other places. They're like, "Oh, we've got one store that's like that's super tiny. That yeah. is, you know, it's how which how many are full, and yeah. and we're just we're spoiled. We have stores all over with with great merchandise, yeah. but also yeah. spaces to play, yeah. and that's what makes this area so nice. Yeah, yeah. And and not only just, not only stores like Guardian or PGS or like Red Castle. There's a ton of little pop up shops that are magic shops, um, that run events and have yeah. product and stuff like that. And so and you could throw a stone in Portland and probably land yeah. between two stores. There's so many of them. Yeah, yeah. I have a friend Rebecca who um, who you know her and her partner have have a store in Southeast Portland, a little farther out from Guardian. And you know they do the, the the kind of the big three I think um, Magic and Dungeons Dragons and mm-hmm. you know and actually not the they don't actually have Warhammer so they don't do the third big three but um, but you know but it's a nice community place and they have a cute little storefront and so of course whenever I go to a store I have to support you know yeah. so that's just how it goes they support your locals so um, well let's let's kind of shift gears I guess why don't we talk about yeah. the King of Coins yeah. event it's all over who ended up with the longest and defense so longest defense was um, Eli yeah. um, he successfully defended the Kador token three times in a row uh, there were other players who had at, uh, three or more you know defenses but they weren't all the same coin in mm-hmm. a row and and so and the, and the prerequisite was longest defense in a row the consecutive defenses. And then sportsmanship went to Andrew, yep. and so he's the only one who hasn't got his glass yet. So mm-hmm. I'll be I'll be over at Rune Board tonight to give it to him, and then um, and so so AKA, the season, AKA and, slow Andrew, slow yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know he's so much fun to play against. Yeah, and so and he's super chill about so many things. And yeah. so, um, but but the thing is, is he's actually a good player too. Yeah. So so it, it's a good game all around. So. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited that he got it. There were a lot of people who got votes, though, and there were a lot of people who got who got multiple votes. It's just Andrew had more votes. Yeah. So and that's that's how it goes. So, um, so yeah. So uh, some some digits, I guess. We had 19 people sign up to participate in the season, and the season went for five and a half weeks. Yeah, roughly. Roughly five and a half weeks. 
and it was a lot of fun to see people um, cut talk smack on the discords. Mm -hmm. Am I right? A lot of it, <laughs> uh, and uh, the, and some good challenges the, were were put out. The former the former channel that was known as the Masters League got right. turned into the Coin Purse, and that's very much what it was. <laughs> yes. It's just a lot of a lot of. Trash talking, a lot of challenges going back and forth, and coins changing hands, which is exactly what you know yeah. you wanted for the for the league. I had a lot right. of fun. I had right. fun playing yep. in it and watching watching yeah. the coins change hands over and over and over. Yeah, that's the, all I heard was was good positive uh, things from that. And Dan, you did the glass that you got for. We had these pint glasses yeah. to everyone, the listeners who haven't seen it yet. Um, we we got these pint glasses made and with engravings on them first annual king of coins and with our logo on there and then and then the award that you won and so like for example josh uh josh briggs won the the day of the invitational he was he, he got a gift certificate you know for for a you know a mon monetary prize for winning the thing he wanted most was the glass yeah i'm i'm jealous i'm jealous i didn't get a glass right. it's a pretty cool looking glass it's probably why yeah. i didn't make the sports match there you go <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to post a picture of those glasses too. I mean, yeah, my aunt does some of that engraving and stuff, so yeah, we were able to get that. Yeah, kinda, they were awesome, kind of nice, and uh, yeah. going to keep that because they were asking us, "Oh, you this, you're a first annual on there? Does that mean you're going to do it again?" Yeah. Yes, that is <laughs> of our plan to do it yeah. again. So yeah, that was pretty neat. I'm one. looking forward to it already. Right? Yeah, we're yeah. gonna have to schedule out when we're gonna do that one now. But right. um, yeah, so we'll have to get some pictures of that. I got got a couple pictures of. Uh, of our champ there, of our of our longest defense, and then of the glasses we have that as well. So yeah. get some of that posted up. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, what was your favorite thing about the season, Dan? Uh, like I just enjoyed like people getting out there and, and being excited about it. Yeah, um, that was kind of cool to to actually see. You know, it started out a little bit slow, a couple people here, a couple people there, and then it really kind of grew. And like I said, the channel just being able to watch people, you know, especially uh. When a King Jeremy first of his name did a lot yeah. of uh, trash talking on there. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was that was pretty good. <laughs> um, stuff like that, you know. So it was really really enjoyable to see people interact and, and be excited about yeah. it. So yeah. Um, what was your favorite thing about it, Chad? You got to participate too. So yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know if I have any any more to add. It was a okay. lot of fun. Yeah. Particip participating it. it my, I guess actually my my favorite thing was actually being able to participate in it and not running the event and, and being stuck on the sidelines watching everybody else like have all of this fun and everything. And, yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun to do and watch, uh, to come up to watch people playing games with their coins sitting at the edge of the table like uh, at the clock, like next yeah. to the clock between the two players and... Um, watching to see who it was that was going to be walking away with it but yeah it was a lot of fun i enjoyed it uh, i look forward to playing yeah. again playing yeah. in it again uh and hopefully next time i'll be a little i'll get some more practice in and actually yeah. um make a better run of things yeah well you, you ended the season with a coin and so yeah. so kudos to you so i think um so yeah i i enjoyed it all the all the way um there were um i think Maybe we can transition a little bit and talk about um, things that we could maybe do differently for the season, um, some of the lessons learned. Um, one of the things that I personally wanted to do is I wanted to, to make it out to each of the stores and, and, just ha and just have a presence. And even if I didn't play that night, but at least say hi to the players and things like that. Yeah. And um, I was able to get out to each store at least once, but, uh, but regrettably I didn't get out uh, enough. Um, to every all the stores and you know like like PGS is just really hard for me to get to period yeah. and so just uh, just because of things that I have going on personally on Thursday nights now but yeah. but like um, um, and but it was a lot of fun to see all the action and um, and then there was and then reporting is I think a thing that um, uh, that I think there's a there was a there's a space in the middle there where where I didn't catch everyone all the all the coins changing hands and so we might look at a better way of reporting next time yeah so I want to th uh, thanks to Ben who picked up the slack a little bit he was able to um, help yeah. yeah help identify who all the coin holders were 
and set up a, a, a tag, uh, you know, a, a role on the Discord channel and things like that. So I found that very helpful. Yeah, much so. Better. Yeah, I know. Actually, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because there is a there is a tag for it. I was looking to change my name after I lost to Greg from Crusher of Gregland to The Fallen. So I'm Chathamus The Fallen because I fell oh. into Gregland now. Yes. Um, <laughs> but I noticed that like not only am I uh, am I a coin holder, but I'm also a lich. So I don't know what that's about. If, if somebody, if someone's responsible for that, Ooh. tell me. I don't know why. Shame. <laughs> well, man. But yeah, um, Ben, thank you for all of your hard yeah. work keeping up with uh, the transitioning of coins, uh, making sure people's names, he changed colors of names for everyone right. that had a coin yeah. so that we would be recognized in the channel. Uh, and it helped a lot for you know tossing up those challenges yeah and uh setting up those defenses and things like that so thank you ben for all your help with that thank you jeremiah and dan for running the event in the first place yeah well, it was exciting i think right. it was something fresh and new for our area um i would love to do it again and i would love to have you know i would love to see 24 players right. participate a little more from the east side would be nice and i know that uh, tournament games meta is just kind of getting started. They just they finished their journeyman league During the king of coins event I think like kind of right when we were okay. like in the very beginning of the king of coins event And so some of their players weren't up to the 75 point yeah. level yet And so I mean so I'm not that's that's totally fine They didn't participate this year, but but I would love to see more citywide pr participation uh, next year and then and who knows maybe the invitational could be a little bit bigger we, we chose eight. We've got coins made for the four original factions. But we had, like, minions players who were going, I want a minions coin. Yeah. You know, and things maybe like that. that. I mean, we do have, I mean, maybe by that year we're going to have, what, 14 overall, 15 factions yeah. uh, to choose yeah. from. So, yeah. yeah, we could do a... I mean, I suppose... Cephalix coin. Yeah, I was gonna say. If I you, want a Cephalix. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to get into the real nit grit, you can you can do multiple coins for like the mercenary minion. Yeah. So you could have a pharaoh. You could have blind water. You can have yeah. uh, what was formerly known as like Forsar Syndicate or Laylee's Resistance. Like there's tons of different logos. Um, tons of different things that you could use for yeah. inspirational pieces. That'd be fun. Maybe we could tie it into like the, the Oblivion campaign somehow. Yeah. And maybe we can get some logos for some of the stuff that's that's covered in there. Yeah. But um, one of the feedback I got about the coins themselves, um, people generally liked the like they're the fifty millimeter. They liked that it was a little bit taller. Um, yeah. It felt more. It felt like it had more more value, I guess. Yeah. Um, but one of the one of the feedback I got was. There, there was no indication of what it was like on the coin. It didn't, oh, say, it yeah. didn't say King of Coins yeah. 2019. And so so we would probably do a redesign of the coins yeah. for next year. So yeah. yeah, you could do that on the back side of it probably. Yeah. Uh, is maybe make a some sort of a simple logo for it. Yeah. Well, we have a logo now actually for Spell yeah. Storm. So now, you know, we got them done before we actually had the uh, logo. Yeah. Our and logo hadn't been finalized yet when, yeah. when we got the coins. Yeah, made. you can easily so. do the faction logo on one side yeah. and then like your logo and uh, King of Coins. Yeah, uh, the, the year, year on there. That's yeah. a great idea, you know, and that's yeah. that's great stuff. And like we're just kind of going from scratch. Like, yeah. what do we jerk? Sure. Yeah, the first, <laughs> yeah. The, like from my first own time, personal yeah. experience, yeah. trying trying some sort of an event for the first time, a lot of it is very much by the seat of your pants. Yeah. And there's so yeah. much stuff that you catch like in the midst or like right after the very beginning. You're like, oh, that would have been such a good idea. Yeah. Like, I can definitely relate from the times that um, like you guys are a little familiar with the Masters leagues uh, yeah. that we've done before and. We've been doing them for about four or five years at this point, but they've changed in some small way almost every single time. Like yeah. the original, the original version of it was actually like the Iron Gauntlet League, where it was modeled after the very first season of Iron Gauntlet, where you could take two different factions if you wanted to, but mm -hmm. it was still the like assigned opponent type of a deal that's always been a part of it. Uh, but it's changed um, pretty much every time that we've done it in some yeah. small variants or another. I participated in the, in the Masters uh, last year and this year. Yeah. And and I, I like the way that it's formatted. And one of the things that... So the second thing I would change um, is regarding the Invitational. See, I actually liked having only eight players yeah. because it felt more special, I think. Yeah. Like you had to earn your spot to be in the Invitational. Yeah. 
Um, and, and plus it guarantees only three rounds. Yes. If you go yeah. beyond that, it's, then a sh- it's, it's a shorter day. It's yeah. less to organize. Yeah. It is a, a tighter knit number. Right. Like when you have, when you have things like War Machine Weekend or qualifiers and things like that, it is usually cut to top eight. Yeah. Like mm. it, for multiple reasons, not only for scheduling, but it's also yeah. like kind of, otherwise it, I feel like the problem is, is that if you're at eight and you want to increase it, you can't go to 12. Correct. You have to go to 16. Right. It has to be something that's going to evenly break down in rounds. And like right. 14 is okay, but you get into buys as, yeah. Yeah. and, and you know, yeah. uh, pare down losses and things like that. And the schedule, and, and it gets weird yeah. as far as an event organization and breakdown of rounds and things like that. I think eight is, is honestly a perfect number. Um, yeah, that's as far I as the too. logos, like I don't, I don't yeah. know how to solve that problem because well, there's too many cool logos and there's yeah, there's so too much stuff. So I think one one uh, question we got uh, at one point about the about the invitational was doing the final round like the way the masters are done, where where people can we set up the pairings and you have a week to set up your game with your opponent and then and then over the course of I guess would be three weeks, so three rounds, one round each week. Uh, we would have our, our champion. Um, the downside with that is that is that there you I think you would lose out on the camaraderie. Like there was yeah. a lot of like there was a lot of fun bantering and just you know the day of the event at the Invitational. It was a lot of fun. The people were just hanging out and talking. I mean, it was more than just playing a game. Yeah. And you know, and I felt like maybe some of that would, would get lost if we switched to that format. Um, I think, so I think next time, you know, scheduling it, but being more mindful about the location and, and date. And, you know, I, I, I said it off the air, but, um, but I wanted a central location because I wanted more people to participate. turns out more, there's more Westsiders that participated. And so changing location could have been better or whatever, but, which means we would have had more availability on the date because Guardian is just really hard to schedule. Yeah. And, you know, our, 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 our final invitational day got bumped, unfortunately, to a day that was less, that was not as workable for most of our players. Well, so because there's another big con or whatever going on, right? So, yeah. yeah, we had a, we had a handful <laughs> of our guys down in Kingdom Con. But, um, yeah. you know, oh, um, yeah. so, you know, but even that, you know, uh, so, so anyway, so there's, uh, so maybe finding... A space in the year where there's less things going on, um, and that's where we slot in King of Coins. Yeah, exactly. is kind of what I'm thinking. Well, and the other thing with if we did the um, individual games off is you don't really have your judge there, which I know uh, you were very valuable in a few cases of being the judge. Oh, mm-hmm. would you like to know what I learned? <laughs> <laughs> did you ever hear back about? Um, um, yeah. So between Jeff and Greg. Uh, yeah. So okay. um, I I went to the forums. And I was reading, um, and I and I read through the whole thread about that. So okay. let's set up the scenario yeah. first, okay? So, so there are, um, so there were three. Um, I guess there were three judge calls I had to make that day. Uh, one was a line of sight thing, and I brought out my little laser, and I felt all official, and <laughs> you know, um, and the the funny part was the model's arm was sticking over the base, and it was really actually very difficult to determine whether yeah. or not line of sight actually existed, but. Um, and then, um, and then the second thing uh, I'm going to talk about last because that was the biggest issue. Yeah. The th- so the third issue had to do with um, uh, model placement with uh, involving the least amount of resi- uh, oh, change to the board. Yeah. Least of disturbance is the word I want to use. The board <coughs> state. And so, um, and so there was a I think it was a slam. It was yeah. Ozzy and Greg's game, oh, and God, yeah. and Ozzy, uh, which was a brutal slog. And um, Ozzy, after that game, said he was exhausted. <laughs> um, I don't blame him. And so it was trolls on minions, and and Ozzy was doing the slam with an Earthborn, and slamming a model into Blob, and um, part of his Lord of Blood. Yeah, Blob, yeah, yeah Blob. Don't know the. Thank you for short, thank you for translating. Yeah. yeah, and and the problem is, is there was like a million models there, and so the question is, is where does uh, where does this model go? involving least amount of disturbance in the board and so we were able to do it by moving the affected model and only two other models yeah and so that was uh, that was a really good one but the but the second incident where i had to be a judge actually um go ahead. before you move on i uh i was trying not to 
stick my nose into that because I was a player and not an officiator mm -hmm. during that event. So the way that I understand least disturbance is this. The model that is being affected by the movement moves, travels to its ending location, mm -hmm. and stops when appropriate. Larger size, same size or larger base, obstruction, or like, so like a building or a wall or something like that. Right. That model, that final location is supposed to be its final place. And everything else moves around it. Yeah. If, for some reason, that model cannot be placed in that location, you move it instead. Example being... If it lands on top of a model that is immobile and cannot be moved or affected by a spell that says that they cannot be moved, that model is moved. Otherwise, you do not ever move that model uh, when, determining, when determining least disturbance. A lot of people argue of like, oh, if you're slamming this model and three other models are moved, why wouldn't you just move the slammed model in the appropriate way because it's least disturbance. That's not the way that the rule works. It's not number of models. It's not strictly not least amount of models moved. It's uh, where you include the slammed model. It's least amount of models um, excluding that model. Right, because so that model has to finish its it's action. It's supposed to finish there unless, exactly. unless game rules say that it cannot. Right. Not because it's move, moving it to a displaced place makes it the least disturbance of models. Uh, right. So if it lands on top of something and it pushes something into a building, into another base or something like that, like that's the way that it has to work. And so or if it lands on top of like an incorporeal flag or something like that, you displace the model, the model. being moved off of it. Not right. the incorporeal. But as close exactly. to or still in base to base yeah. contact with whatever it is that stopped it from moving or as close to its end its ending right. location. So we were able to meet all those conditions yeah. by only moving two other models. Yeah, and so it was uh, it was good, and 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 uh, and so I I felt like I felt like Saturday was a huge step forward for me personally in understanding how the game gets played because then I had to make it I had to look at it not from a player's perspective where I'm affected, but from an independent like judge perspective, and so it was cool. I got to think critically about things. And um, hopefully that means that it'll result in me becoming a better player. But the second incident uh, also involved Greg. Mm -hmm. And and <laughs> I think this is... Uh, so his caster was... Was it Maylock? Maylock, He's yes. the one that gives undead. And it's a... Is that on his feet yeah. turn? It's a spell. It's yeah. a spell. So there's, there's okay. two different things going on. So he gives on. a spell in yeah. his... Well, let's do, let's do that one first. Yeah. And then we'll do the arcana second. Well, um, yeah. No, I was sorry, oh. but there's two different interactions with him, which is... His okay. spell that says models inside his control area while within gain undead. Mm -hmm. and then his is that friendly says, models? Yes, uh, friendly. Yes. yes. Friendly faction models. Friendly faction models, uh, gain undead. And then the second part of the issue that was kind of going on was his feet says undead models currently within his control gain plus two armor. Correct. And so both of those were up. And Jeff, who's playing uh, Grimkin, plays the, uh, plays the Arcana that um can you remember a curse a is curse the name of it which then to... um you're looking at the rule the, i'm trying the to language. <laughs> yeah preemptively so give me just a second I got it. yeah and so what we um and so the big question was so basically it was to remove undead i guess um is what it does well it, it makes things living so construct yeah, with living warrior model would become living warrior models. The uh, undead gators now would become living gators. They become living, yeah, yeah. So the big question. Okay, so here, yeah, here's the word. Here's yeah. the wording. Yeah, uh, the warlock can play this card when a friendly faction model with a corpse soak in is damaged by an enemy attack while in the warlock's control range. Triggered requirements met. While in the warlock's control range, enemy models lose incorporeal, tough, and undead, and cannot have damage removed from them. Additionally, enemy non-war beast models lose construct while in the warlock's control range uh curse lasts for one round yeah so the big question is is that does that that what does that happen to the models that were just now made undead by the spell and the feat that that greg just cast yeah and so so we had this so we had a fun conversation around the table and reading the language while within yeah. and looking at all the qualifications the the and, debate so the, the issue actually stems from another argument that has been addressed in the rules forums, or at least been addressed in some way. and Because uh, normally it appears like it's straightforward. It's, 
I feet, my, you know, my dudes get this effect. Okay, I use this ability that removes your feet, essentially, uh, while you're within during my turn. The discussion sprung from this, uh, this rules interaction where a model with Prowl benefiting and gaining stealth, uh, what happens if another model says you lose stealth? Uh, I.e. Reinhold picks a model, that model loses stealth. The ruling, I believe, has been that if a model would lose stealth from an ability but is still standing in a static effect that grants the ability back, they then regain the ability. So like if I have uh, a Gallus Grove standing in a forest, it has Prowl, as long as it is in the forest, it gains stealth. It is still standing in the forest when Reinhold says, hey guys, there's a tree over there, it no longer has stealth. It regains the stealth effect because it's still standing inside of the forest. Was kind of the discussion and the confusion in the rules interaction of, I have something that's constantly applying that's also on top of something that's constantly denying. It's like, where do you resolve the effects? Right. And I think, I mean, if you look at that thread, there's a conversation about can't trumping can yeah. um, in, in, that, in that conversation too. But there's also instances yeah. of automatically hitting trumping automatically missing if you have a gun that automatically hits you can target a stealth model and hit them even if you're greater than five inches away hmm. i don't know if that rules interaction has changed but i know that i ran into hmm. that situation playing against uh veil one in mark two her gun automatically hits and auto hitting trumped the auto missing of the stealth clause interesting so so that, that would be a case of specific trumping generic yes probably yeah so, um, so the, yeah, so we had this whole conversation because the other side of it, too, is, is you know, um, Manalok's abilities uh, granting, you know, undead and the armor buff. And so yeah. the question is, so, so does the Arcana just remove the undead, and the, but the armor buff still stays? And so that was part of the co things to consider, too, yeah. while we were, you know, while we were discussing. Yeah. So, and, and we ended up deciding, um, what did I decide? I think you decided that they became living didn't you? during Gre during Jeff's turn. During Jeff's yes. turn, and then yeah. when it came back to when it cycled back to Greg's turn, they returned to being undead. That's right, and I think that's how they played it out. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jeff later messaged me and um, and with the link to that thread, and he thought that I made the right call. So um, so that was the probably the toughest thing of the day, and there was a lot of voices. Because there's a lot, of, yeah. a lot of us standing around, yeah. you know, having this conversation. Um, but, um, but then, it, but it just made me want to go back later and read more rules. And because there's that, it's really funny. Because yeah. if you just read the rules and you read them all the way through, a lot of times the answer is there. That's yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's why when you were you were asking me something, yeah, about uh, I think it was Eli and Jeff's game about corpse collection and things like that. And I kept repeating, what does the ability say? What yeah, does the, the ability nearest, say? I was yeah. kind of getting irritated because I'm like, you're not answering my question. Yeah. I'm asking you, what does the ability say? And then check the rules. Yeah. yeah that's right, because the, that, there was a corpse question question. That's yeah. right. I forgot about that one. But. Yeah. So anyway, so all in all, um, it was a big step forward for me personally. It was a, I think it was a great experience for our community. Yeah. Um, I love that, that we get to be the guys that say, hey, here's a fun event participate and have fun and then everyone who participates mm -hmm. does have fun, fun. Yeah. so there you go so yeah so how that that, that's the place that that's the place that i like to be and so uh so it was real it was a real honor to be able to run that for for our community so well and i think guardian even gave you a little thank you for you know like they did you know, yeah they they, they, they said that through. they said that our episode, that um that our event was was well run everyone was very polite and nice and they appreciated how we helped clean up at the end and yeah. we ended on time and so as a, as someone who's trying to run an event, that was really awesome feedback from, you know, from the place that hosted the event because they didn't charge me to, ho to run it there. You know, they just, they said, sure. And, you know, and we rolled with it. And so, and then, um, and then they also gave us 20% on War Machine products yeah. that day for all, everyone who participated in the, in the tournament. So, well, I don't know. Um, you had, you took I, off pretty quick, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. But so, I bought stuff. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, well, I don't care. Oh, call them I, up. I, I, no, it's fine. Okay. I, I uh, bought two, I bought another Wold White, and I uh, bought a, uh, a Crook 
counter. So okay. I'm, I'm not that concerned about it. I okay. I purchased them fully intending to pay full price. I don't care. Okay. Well, Eli <laughs> used his gift money right away, yeah, and yeah. he basically spent five bucks out of pocket and nice. got like a trencher unit or something. And, yeah. You know, I don't know. So, um, well, let's. Uh, why don't we go to the next thing? I guess we love talking about the hobby side of things, and so. Uh, what what is on your on your guys's hobby desk? Tell us what you're working on. Uh, I'm still working on finishing up some painting, some bases, um, and then uh, recently also picked up some Pharaoh Valkyries because you know they're cool. nice. <laughs> Everyone needs Valkyries. Don't, yes. Don't tell Jason Walker he's looking for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, too bad for him. And a bunch of distributors are out of stock right now. Yeah, like, that's I, I had to find one that actually had it in stock. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't realize they were out of stock. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. They're cool. <laughs> they are very okay. sweet. I mean, so, you're, so you're working on some Valkyries? Yep. Okay, nice. Anything else? No, like I said, just finish up the other trolls and I'm going to call that good for a little while. Okay. Uh, I got a bunch of basing stuff done on some models um, that I that had been painted or needed a couple touch-ups. Um, like my Fire and Blood Pack, my uh, Wolves of Orbros got based, some World Watchers got based bunch of other things i just recently did my wolf riders as well um little things that had been like been painted and just needed the basing done so now they're completed models and done it in my bag and i have some other stuff um that i'm working on as well uh and then i just got my well of orboros recently so i'm hoping to get that primed and start working on painting that here pretty soon nice yeah, I've got some uh, clan rats that I'm working on. i got to switch them over from square bases to round bases and mm. things like that. I'm also uh, sorting through some of the Malifo crews, realizing I didn't have the effigy for, for the guild, and so mm. i gotta, uh, so got to work on that. And um, um, the third edition is coming out uh, probably, probably June or July is what the guesses are. And so i um, looking forward to it because they clean it up real nice. It's, it's going to be a really good... Um, it's already a good game, but it's going to be, I think, even better. Um, Malifo 3rd Edition is going to be good. But um, I still have a bunch of uh, kaiju things to do. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard. I haven't had a lot of hobby time the last uh, several weeks for various reasons, and so, um, and so I haven't made much progress on that. But um, and, <laughs> and my Drop Zone Commander guys, I, um, I've got them uh, primed. But I actually haven't put any paint on them yet. So it's okay. So at least at least they're primed. Then they're, you, yeah. I mean, you're not waiting on weather. You're right. just waiting yeah, on time. That's true. But we are doing something fun. So with the Monprop game, mm -hmm. um, so we have the starters, and the starters come with the cardboard buildings that you have to assemble. Yeah. So those cardboard buildings are uh, one and a half by one and a half. And so if you go to Home Depot and you get yourself a um, a two by two, and um, which is actually less than two inches, in case you don't know that. <laughs> um, and and so so Oz and I did that. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to cut those, and we're going to put those inside the buildings. Okay. So that way they have a little bit more weight and yeah. and and just a little more substance. And because we're not going to we're not going to actually go and buy a bunch of apartment buildings. We're just yeah. going to no. we're just going to use the cardboard ones that came <laughs> in the starters and call it good. And so, but that's what we're going to do. And so I'm really, really excited about that. It's, that was a couple of bucks and a little project that Ozzy and I can do. And so we're going to be working on that as well. We got the wood and now we just uh, didn't have time to, to cut it up yet. So, uh, but yeah, so thanks for giving him the, that demo, by the way. Yeah, yeah so, you're welcome. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was also a good learning experience because it was only the second time that I had played it. So it was oh, like nice. yeah. trying to remember the rules accurately and then also trying to figure out stuff as it was going. So it was a lot yeah. of fun. I've been, and I've been jonesing to like do another game or a demo because I'm because I had also just finished painting up those. I guess I don't remember if I mentioned that before, uh, but I finished painting up both of those starter kits yes. as well. Um, I did the destroyers one, pretty similar to the studio scheme, but I did the Defender X in kind of a Gundam paint scheme, Gundam which shot. I looks amazing. Don't want to paint that white again. Yeah. The line work was not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but painting the white was just a pain in the neck. Yeah. Because yeah. it just didn't. It was just trouble getting it to look right. Yeah. yeah. Turned yeah. out all right. I was going to say one thing I got to do too is uh, kind of hobbyish related. Uh, is I uh, got the Kickstarter of uh, Batman Gotham City Chronicles delivered. 
Yeah, that Honestly, was an amazing a lot. Right. We got hundreds of models. It's huge, yeah. A lot of Batman villains and, <laughs> and uh, the heroes and everything. And it was really cool. I kind of briefly looked at them, a um, couple of them. But yeah, I want to do a serious unboxing. It's just like I got this big package on the doorstep and I opened the door. I was like, man, what did my wife order this time? Oh, it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing she wasn't home. Um, <laughs> so that was that was exciting. So I'm uh, I'm kind of anxious to dig into that one and uh, and Dan, yeah. I recommend that you uh, revisit one of our previous episodes yeah. about storage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, what's nice about these guys is they actually came in the uh, molded plastic trays. Oh, okay. So it actually makes it a lot more handy. It's just like six different boxes <laughs> that yeah. they all fit into with their stuff. So, yeah. You know what's interesting about that? The molded plastic trays is if you paint a model and you just put them in and out of that tray, won't it yeah. rub some of the paint off? Yeah, well, I mean, you seal them and you just kind of seal be careful them. with you it, go. you know, and, yeah. and everything. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't know if sealing would be sufficient. So, I so I have, I have a Godfather from Simon, and there's like hundreds of models in there too, and, and they're in the the molded plastic trays, and I wanna, I wanna paint them. Yeah. Just if you use them a yeah. lot, you just gotta kind of reseal every so often. Okay, them that's stuff. a trick. Okay, mm. nice. Yeah, and on the subject of storing, there, I actually sold two of my cases. Uh, uh, so that I'm simplifying the way that I'm yeah. storing. I so. remember seeing you, seeing you at the store later that day. We got done recording, and then <laughs> yeah, we both went our own ways, and we both ended up down at Guardian for for the Monday War Machine night. Yeah. And I was like, Ozzy walked over. I was like, Didn't I just? What are you doing here? Yeah. Didn't I just see you this morning? Where's your dad? Where's yeah. your... <laughs> Who's your father? Yeah. Well, we have a few events coming up that we want to just let our listeners know about. We have the Lock and Load, which is coming up June 21, 22, 23. And I am proud to say that I have my tickets purchased. Gentlemen, will you be joining me? I plan to. hey I'm trying. I, like do said, it, Dan. Do I, bought it. My, I bought my ticket in hopes of just, it'll work out. Oh, good. <laughs> so, we'll see. Okay, rock and roll. Well, we hope to see you up there. Uh, the uh, Iron Arena awaits. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then the NorCal Classic happens uh, just a month later, I guess, or a month and a half later, August 9th through 11th, and that's going to be down at uh, Game Castle in Mountain View, California. So, And then we also just want to encourage all of our listeners to, no matter what game you play, to get out and support the local stores. Uh, we mentioned earlier on the episode that we have a plethora of great places yeah. to play games. And, and not you, just War Machine. Not just War Machine. Yep. And if you look at their calendars, they're going to have... You know, a Kill Team Nine, Underworld's Nine. They're going to have Infinity, mm-hmm. Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah. You know, they're going to have Guild Ball. Well, Guild Ball is not so much anymore in our area, but um, there's still people who play yeah. it. I just don't know. I think most of it's happening at people's houses. Yeah, probably. And then, um, and then there's also a lot of War Machine players are dabbling into Judgment, and yeah. so um, maybe one of these game stores will start to have a Judgment Night too. So. Um, but yeah, though, so I encourage you to get out and, uh, and to play more games. Boom, 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 boom,